Welcome to this course on Cooper Beeline Seismic Bracing. In this third lesson on codes and standards of seismic bracing, we will learn about the codes and standards that govern the quality of Cooper Beeline Tolco seismic bracing products and the requirements for the installation of seismic bracing. Before we get started, let's review what we will be covering in this lesson. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain when seismic bracing is required, explain NFPA 13 standard for fire sprinkler systems, explain IBC and ASCE 7 standards for mechanical, electrical, and plumbing MEP systems, and understand approvals and compliances. Seismic bracing is required to be installed as per the International Building Code, IBC, the National Fire Protection Association, NFPA 13, and the American Society of Civil Engineers, ASCE 7, are two standards that are referenced in the IBC. NFPA 13 provides guidelines on how and when to install bracing for fire sprinkler systems, and ASCE 7 defines when it is required for mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems. We'll now discuss each of these standards and outline their requirements. Seismic bracing is required for fire sprinkler systems, as set forth by NFPA 13. Section 9 of this standard lays out in detail how and when bracing is to be installed. Fire protection systems are composed of multiple pipe runs of various sizes referred to as mains, cross mains, and branch lines. Mains and cross mains supply pressurized water to the branch lines. Branch lines are smaller diameter pipes where sprinkler heads are attached. NFPA 13 requires that mains and cross mains be braced, while branch lines are required to be restrained. Since braces on the mains and cross mains also support the weight of branch lines, a special calculation must be done to show that the braces can support not just the load of the main or cross main that it is attached to, but also all of the attached branch lines. This calculation is referred to as Zone of Influence Calculation. NFPA 13 also requires mains and cross mains to be braced both laterally and longitudinally. Let's examine the seismic bracing requirements. Note, for full details, refer to section 9.3.5, Sway Bracing Design, in the NFPA 13 standard for the installation of sprinkler systems. Seismic bracing requirements for lateral sway bracing of fire sprinkler systems. Components must be UL listed. If the project is under the review of FM Global, the products must also be FM approved. All feed and cross mains should be braced regardless of the pipe size. All branch lines should be restrained, not braced. However, if the branch lines exceed 2.5 inches in diameter, they will need to be braced. This is a rare case scenario. Spacing between braces should not exceed 40 feet. The distance between the last brace and end of the pipe run must not exceed 6 feet. Seismic bracing requirements for longitudinal sway bracing of fire sprinkler systems. Components must be UL listed. If the project is under the review of FM Global, the products must also be FM approved. Mains and cross mains should be braced. Brace spacing should not be more than 80 feet. The distance between the last brace and end of the pipe run must not exceed 40 feet. Seismic bracing requirements for zone of influence, ZOI, of fire sprinkler systems. The zone of influence, ZOI, is the area of a fire sprinkler system protected by the position of a seismic brace. Note, due to the nature of fire sprinkler branch lines, the way we calculate load for fire protection seismic bracing systems differs from MEP systems. Branch lines should be restrained, not braced. Branch lines should not be included in the load calculations for the longitudinal seismic brace. Branch lines are included in the load calculations within the ZOI for the cross main or feed main lateral seismic brace. 
ZOI report can be done manually or generated by Toll Brace, software designed for bracing of fire sprinkler systems. To make the process of designing seismic bracing for fire sprinkler systems easier, Cooper Beeline developed a software program that assists the fire sprinkler system designer in the NFPA 13 requirements, performs the zone of influence calculation, and prints out calculations and submittal documents, either in a paper format or electronic format for insertion into CAD drawings. Let's look at some of its features. Tollbrace software performs ZOI calculations, creates submittal sheets per NFPA 13, creates branch line restraint details for submittals, meets requirements of NFPA 13 standards for 1999, 2002, 2007, and 2010, also meets requirements for IBC, FM Global, OSHPOD, and Canadian Building Code. The International Building Code, IBC, references the ASCE-7 as a standard for seismic bracing of mechanical, electrical, and plumbing MEP systems. The American Society of Civil Engineers, ASCE-7, determines where bracing is required by using two major concepts, the seismic design category and the system importance factor. Let's define these two terms. Seismic Design Category, SDC. The Seismic Design Category, SDC, is a classification assigned to a structure based on its occupancy category and the severity of the earthquake ground motion at the site, as defined in Chapter 11 of ASCE 7-05. Listed as Category A, B, C, D, E, or F, it is typically found on the Project S1 drawing or the project specifications. Component Importance Factor, also known as I sub P. All non-structural components are assigned an importance factor or I sub P of 1.0 or 1.5. The importance factor defaults to 1.0 unless any of the following criteria applies. The component is required to function for life safety purposes after an earthquake, including fire protection sprinkler systems. The component contains hazardous materials. The component is in or attached to an occupancy category 4 structure, defined as an essential facility, such as a hospital, fire station, or police station, in ASCE 7-05, Table 1-1 and the component is needed for continued operation of the facility or its failure could impair the continued operation of the facility. Charts have been developed under the IBC to show how the seismic design category, SDC, and importance factor, I sub P, are used to determine whether or not seismic bracing is required for either a plumbing, mechanical, or electrical system. Note. For full details, refer to the IBC. Example, if a building project has been assigned a SDC of C and we are installing a mechanical system consisting of 3-inch single hung pipe with an I sub P of 1.5, then we can see that bracing is required. Example, if a building project is assigned a seismic design category, SDC of C, and we are installing cable tray that weighs 12 pounds per foot, supported from trapeze hangers, with an importance factor, I sub P, of 1.5, then we can see that bracing is required. All seismic bracing components need to comply with certain standards and obtain approvals like UL, FM, and OSHPOD before their installation. In this section, we will explain the differences between these approvals. Underwriters Laboratories, UL, is an independent testing agency that follows the NFPA 13 standard. Test standard UL203A is used for seismic bracing. When a product has been submitted to UL and has passed the testing by following the criteria set forth in UL203A, it is then said to be UL listed. UL performs monotonic, also known as static testing, using tension and compression loads only. 
the standard for passing the test looks at load capacity, with no deformations exceeding one-eighth of an inch and zero slippage. Products that obtain a UL listing are proven to perform quite well through very strong forces exerted on piping systems during an earthquake. Due to this reliability and consistency of performance, related UL listed products are often specified for use in many state and city building codes. Factory Mutual FM Global is a testing agency owned by Factory Mutual Group of Insurers that follows a different test standard than UL. They have created their own test standard, FM 1950, which is a dynamic test. Dynamic means that the products are subjected to forces in multiple planes and repetitive cyclical motion, exactly the kind of forces expected in an earthquake. Due to this cutting-edge test criteria, FM has become the standard required for seismic bracing products by the California Office of Statewide Health Planning and Development, OSHPOD. This organization oversees the building standards for every healthcare facility in California. Since buildings like hospitals fall under this category and are considered essential facilities, OSHPOD is looked to as the worldwide leader in seismic bracing standards. OSHPOD issues system approvals. The OSHPOD pre-approval of Anchorage, OPA, is an approval of a pre-engineered system for bracing of all types of non-structural systems, including fire sprinklers, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems. Cooper Beeline has had OSHPOD approval for its Tolco brand seismic bracing products for 20 years. In addition to performance approvals, listings, and compliance, there are also compliance issues related to the manufacture of seismic bracing products. For projects that fall under military, federal, or sometimes state jurisdiction, there may be a requirement that materials supplied be U.S. domestic material. Domestic is a relative term that by itself is not easily defined. Domestic material requirements, therefore, are driven typically by either the Buy American Act or the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, ARRA. Many of the Tolco seismic bracing products may comply with the requirements of both of these pieces of legislation. For more information on which products are covered, please contact Cooper Beeline. You have come to the end of this lesson on the seismic bracing codes and standards. Let's review what we have covered in this lesson. You should now be able to Explain when seismic bracing is required. Explain the NFPA 13 standard for fire sprinkler systems. Explain IBC and ASCE 7 standards for mechanical, electrical, and plumbing MEP systems. And understand approvals and compliances.